Hey guys, it's Walter. I just saw the FNAF movie and I want to give my thoughts on it. First, I want to talk a little bit about what this movie means to me. So, I remember when I was 12 years old in 7th grade, what I would do is I would come home from middle school I would stop by the corner store, I would pick up chips and soda, and I would go home and I would watch Five Nights at Freddy's YouTube videos, whether that was the game, whether that was fan games, it was a lot of fan game content, so that, that, that definitely took up a lot of my time. And one of the things that was being rumored, and there was a lot of FNAF rumors back in, uh, 2016, 2017, always. There's always been a lot of FNAF rumors. Um, one of the rumors was that there's a FNAF movie, a FNAF movie being made. And when I started hearing like about dates, I started hearing things like, oh, it could take two years, three years to be released. Keep in mind, I was 12 years old. <laughs> I'm 19 now. And... I saw the FNAF movie, and in the theater, I cried. I cried at the FNAF movie. And I cried not because I saw this movie and thought, wow, this is some incredible piece of cinema with just breathtaking narratives and writing. And No, that's not it. I cried during the movie because this was obviously a love letter to the fans. This movie was, it was like one last thank you from Scott. One last goodbye. It just moved me so much because that's exactly what it felt like. I have been obsessed with this game since I was 10 years old in fifth grade. Literally in elementary school, mind you. I was in elementary school. I was obsessed with this game. Um, I would come home Friday afternoon hot day in the spring, watch FNAF videos on my laptop for hours on end. I know every secret, every bug, every detail, hidden fact, fake Easter egg about FNAF 1 and 2. I know the, the fake purple guy image, the fake one frame purple guy. That wasn't real. Did I believe it? I think so. I think I believe that. Sparky the dog. Definitely believe that. That knowledge was a little, was somewhat rewarded. It was a little rewarded. Because in the movie, there was an empty Sparky the dog suit. And I saw that. I think I might have been the only one in the theater who recognized what that was. The community that Scott has built is unlike any other um because i know there is more people like like me um it's just crazy like the demographic that scott has reached like i was i was outside and uh outside the theater when the movie ended talking to this um this girl like so a little older than me maybe like uh what she looked about five years older than me at least and it's just crazy that it's like wow this movie has reached like from young kids younger than me to like people older than me the community was paid homage to in the movie um matt pat was in the film and let me just say that was an amazing cameo even though it was very small he said the line he said that's just a theory and the whole oh my god the theater it just felt so alive it was like seeing that oh it just it it really warms my heart oh and then uh cory kenshin as well i think matt pat cory kenshin and markiplier are like the three huge youtube or th three three biggest fnaf youtubers it wasn't overdone with the youtubers though which I'm very happy about. Um, I know Daco was on set. 
and they could have put him in, but they didn't. I'm kind of glad they didn't. Not because I don't like Daco, just because you can't just cram the movie full of YouTubers. That's just, it wouldn't work. But no, they didn't do that. They they kept it on the side. They kept it pretty appropriate, which I'm, I'm happy about. Um, I would have loved to, I will admit, I, I will admit, I would have loved to see Markiplier in the movie, but he didn't, he couldn't make it. But it definitely felt like, still, even that, even though he wasn't in it, it still felt like this was the commu- this was a movie for the community. Like I said, there was a Sparky the Dog costume. That's an incredibly niche reference in the community, I feel like. There was a couple lines from the game. William Afton said, catch you on the flip side, which is like, that's, that is a, that is a reference to phone guy. That is, that was not an un- unintentional thing. That was intentional. And then um, he said, I always come back, which is, you know, everyone. Well, it's my favorite spring trap line, but that's so, that's so basic. Springtrap's probably my favorite character because he's so interesting. He's a very interesting character. Um, I was worried that in seeing the behind the scenes photos of the animatronics, I was worried that they weren't going to look good on screen, but I did reserve judgment because I thought, well, the editing might save it. And I think the editing actually did save it because I think they looked pretty damn good on screen. When I see the behind the scenes, it's like, oh, they're very, they're very fabric-y, but when there's a lot of detail added, it uh it blends it makes it actually makes sense because they're not the animatronics aren't fabric in the game they're uh they're like plastic but uh no it worked it worked pretty well i'd say um there were definitely some moments where it's like the scariness of the animatronic in the game got translated over to the movie keep in mind that wasn't all the time and that wasn't the intention all the time they weren't supposed to be scary at every moment in the movie um, if you saw it, you know what I mean, but finally, I'd like to address Scott, Scott Cawthon, the one and only Scott, um, if you're somehow watching this, you're probably not, most likely not. This game has seriously changed my life. This game has given me something to look forward to, something to play, uh, something to hope for, hope for new games. Um, there's always, even if you're not making a game, someone in the community developing a very interesting game. And so there's always really creative, incredible, mechanically driven games. We have really hard FNAF fan games, really um, funny, satirical FNAF fan games. So there's there really is something for everyone. And I'm not the only one who appreciates that. Like and I've seen video I saw videos online of other people reacting to moments and people were screaming and I would have loved to scream at some moments just in like pure joy at like what I what I was watching because it really it really did feel like a guy who knows his fans and he has known he has known his fans and he gives us one last thing to appreciate thank you scott cotton you have you've given me something where it was so influential to my life that i don't know what i would be without it at this point so thank you scott thank you so much